It's time for the Hockey Writers Grindline. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Grind Line here at The Hockey Writers. I am your host, Matthew Zator, and as always, joined in by my line mates, Evan Sabrin and Devin Little. Guys, we're another uh, week <laughs> and only one win uh, for the Red Wings this past week. Three points, but the two losses came against two teams that they were supposed to, that were crucial to win against, and they didn't. it didn't happen. So we'll talk about that, but uh, Devin, how's it going? <laughs> you always set me up after I always set up the negative eh? <laughs> yeah. it's a terrible week and they didn't win the games they were Devin, supposed to anyways Devin how's it going <laughs> um it's it's going fine I guess good to be here with you boys how you guys doing <laughs> Devin how's it going oh man I'm, I've I've come up with a name for this season oh boy <laughs> Death by a thousand cut season. Oh, just every yeah. game. I'm just like, just, just let's let this be over. I'm just, I'm tired of the pain. It's yeah, just right. nonstop pain. And again, I was driving down. And if you guys don't know this, uh, in California, the biggest freeway in California is called the 405 freeway. And I'm driving, I'm driving down it last night. It's, it, it takes me an hour to go five miles from my pickup hockey game. And, I, and I'm, I'm watching the game on my phone and I just, I just, just the emotions. The roller coaster is going through me. And so yeah. It's and it's still not over. So we'll see what happens here. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, they got three games left. One against the Maple Leafs, which is happening today, as you guys are watching this. And then Montreal Canadiens twice. And to finish off the season, one at home. It's a home at home. So one at home, one on the road. So I mean, the Canadians are a beatable team. They're but I mean, they they've been they've been spoilers over the last month or so against some teams, so they're not going to be an easy one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all ends up. They are out of the playoffs as of recording with 85 points, tied with the Washington Capitals, and the Pittsburgh Penguins moved ahead with that overtime win, so they have 86 points in the first in the second wild card spot. So. Yeah, it's not looking overly good. I mean, I guess the Red Wings still have the chance. I mean, if they win out and some other stuff happens, they could end up going into the playoffs. But it's 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 starting to become a little bit less of a less of something that will happen. So, but that'll be our first segment. So I won't talk too much about it. So let us go into our one good, one bad. And I'll start with you, Evan. Uh, a good and a bad from this past week. Hopefully, you can find one. Ah. <laughs> uh... I mean, my good is, you know, if if I had a dollar for every time we use this good this year, you know, the evolution of Lucas Raymond continues. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm every time I see him play, I'm more and more confident that we did find our superstar. Well, at least one, at least. <laughs> um, uh, the bad though, the, the bad has been like really bad. This, this, this. Uh, I'm gonna start with Alex DeBrinket. One goal in twenty games. He has five goals, five even strength goals in his last 60 games. Um, paying a guy seven point a little more out of him, you know, and he, he was great at the, at the start of the season. The first, you know, four, 30, 40 games made the all-star team, but man, he's gone cold. And I know he played great against Pittsburgh with three assists and all that, but he wasn't brought here to pass the puck. He was uh, brought here to, you know, fire that puck in the net for yeah. us. But uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, these cold streaks. I mean, one goal in 20 games is, you know, when you're when you're paying this guy top dollar to come in here and be, you know, this kind of goal scorer and it's not happening, it's it's a little concerning. So I'm a little worried about him. So that's my bad. I know we're going to talk about him more later, so I'll, I'll get into it more then. For sure. Yeah, it's uh, he was on fire to start the season and it. Yeah, kind of has gone through a few cold streaks after that. And yeah, I, we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about that a little later. All right, Devin, uh, over to you. A good and a bad from this past week. Mm, my one good is honestly going to be, um, I know it's kind of like a a small victory considering the uh, 
um, the implications of it, right? But um, getting a point in that game against Pittsburgh, considering they were down 5-3 um, in the third period, I uh, felt like they weren't going to get anything out of that game. Um, so to, uh, to get the point um, and prolong their season even further, <laughs> um, I mean, it was a good effort. Um, like we kind of set off camera, a lot of credit, if not all the credit, basically goes to Lucas Raymond and Dylan Larkin. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, uh, a point to point. Um, again, would have loved to have seen the them to get the, the second point, but um, it was a good effort by two players that um, are going to be part of this team for the foreseeable future. So if anyone's going to step up, uh, it's good that it was those guys. Um, and my one bad, I'm actually going to pivot away from the Red Wings for a minute. Um, it's actually going to be the uh, the story going on with the Coyotes. Mm -hmm. um, and as exciting as it is to think about a team in Salt Lake City, and that's, you know, that's a market that the that Danny Chill's never been to before, right? So it's, it's kind of a new thing. And, you know, everyone gets excited when new branding, new teams and whatnot get into the league. But um, I think a lot or maybe not enough attention is being paid to the just the implications on these people's lives and not just the players, the people who are involved with the team. I know there's somebody very special to this show that is impacted by this stuff. Um, and I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but um, it's a, uh, it's, it's a troubling time in Arizona and it's, it's a real shame because um, I know I still believe in that market, um, but damn, do they really need some, some stability. They need some answers. They need an owner that isn't looking to, um, make a profit on a team he hasn't run right <laughs> since he bought it basically um so yeah it's just it's just a sad story going on in Arizona right now um hopefully you know however this ends uh it ends up for the best and one day uh there will be hockey in Arizona and it'll be functional mm -hmm. because um the fans down there or over there uh, deserve it it's a nightmare there I mean that ownership yeah. is just literally buried that it's it's been a nightmare for that mm. my parents live out there and yeah it, it's bad out there yeah i mean this land auction that's supposed to happen here i that was the last apparently that's the last straw if that doesn't work then relocation is probably going to happen i yeah i mean not not that it would be horrible for i mean salt lake city to get a team but yeah, like you said, the human factor of all these guys, all these people and their jobs. And I mean, it's not like, oh, yeah, you'll have a job in Salt Lake City. I mean, they may, but you're like, well, you have to relocate then. Like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's it's not something that uh, like the players will have. Yeah, the players will move. But, you you know, management, anyone working in the arena, all that stuff, all those guys, uh, you know, all those people are going to be affected with uh, by it. And yeah, like who knows i mean like i said we can't speak for pat but you know his his job is going to be something that's not a guarantee and that's unfortunate right so all right well shout out to pat hopefully everything works yeah. out because uh <laughs> you did an amazing job uh with the coyotes for sure absolutely all right well let's get back to the red wings now and uh <laughs> <laughs> i taught they're not relocating they're not moving anywhere uh let's talk about this playoff push i guess which is kind of took a huge hit i mentioned the penguins didn't get the two points there got the point which better than nothing i guess they did make the comeback it would have been better to get the two and then they lost to the capitals before that it's it's not good and you know now potential of only getting they only have to get more six more points i if they win out over these last three games and the maple Leafs is going to be the toughest one i don't know with Austin Matthews scoring at a clip like insane. I hope that he doesn't score his 70th. Again. Oh, he's definitely scoring 70. He probably. He only has two that's more. That's a to given. Go. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I had Crosby uh, pass Esposito against them and that, and, and also record his 1,000th assist. So I guess Milestones is – I was going to say that was my bad for <laughs> uh, Crosby getting his 1,000th assist against the Red Wings, but whatever. Um, but Dylan Larkin got his 500th point. And so that that's maybe balances it out. <laughs> there you go. So that that's good. All right. Well, let's get back. I mean, the playoffs are are a bit less likely now. So let's. I don't. I don't know if I want to talk about moving toward next season, but I guess we could because 
their play. I mean, first of all, I'll ask you, uh, Devin, do you think they're making the playoffs? I mean, they got the three more games. I mean, doable. That's not mathematically eliminated by any means. I, before I ask you the question of the segment, do you think they're going to make it? I don't. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. They really needed to win their games this week against Washington and Pittsburgh. Um, they could have, they could have lived through a loss to Toronto and they could have even lived through a loss to Montreal, but Washington and Pittsburgh are teams that they're battling for this spot and to lo- drop both games against both of those teams. That's, I just don't know that they're, they are able to come back from that. Um, I guess on the bright side, it's what we predicted right before the season, just miss. Yes. Yeah. They're looking like they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. They're probably going to miss by a point or two. It may even be just a point. Uh, Evan, do you think they're going to do it or is it pretty much done? Yeah, guys, it's, <laughs> it's going to be hard for me, you know, seeing this team make the playoffs you know, the Toronto and back to back in Montreal, you know, it'd be fitting, you know, all the original six teams there, but uh, I don't know. I'm just not seeing it. What I'm seeing is Matthew scoring his 70th <laughs> on a game winner in overtime, beat the Red Wings, which would, would be fitting just like it was fitting the other night when Nadelkovic, you know, won yeah. the game as in, you know, it's more That's fitting great. when 75 year old Jeff Carter. <laughs> goal. It's like, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. So. now i mean i at this point it's 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 hard for me to discern between like is it good should we make the playoffs what is it good for us i don't know I, the way this team is struggling at this point it's it's hard for me to you know is, is the playoffs going to fix our all our problems it's not going to mm. it really isn't but um I, you know I, I think we've missed in hockey town we've missed the playoffs for so long that you know, we want to see it, but I I don't know what it justifies at this point. Mm. So I'm I I'm not hopeful, or I'm not hopeful, but I'm I'm not thinking it happens. I'm not optimistic about it happening, but I'm definitely gonna watch and you know <laughs> sit there and cheer. Yeah, it should should be a good end to the season. And I mean, we've talked about it before that they're they're playing meaningful games. Is that what we wanted? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, we're not, just, they're not just playing out the season, knowing that they're out done uh, looking towards the draft. It's, I mean, they're, these games mean something. So that's, I guess, something to hang your hat on that they're progressing. Uh, yeah. And speaking of Montreal, they're going to have Lane Hudson coming in and that's going to be a boost uh, to the, to the whole lineup because he's been exciting uh, to watch as a prospect and they're going to love him in the lineup. So that's an extra boost to them. I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see. But now that we've got that out of the way, uh, Devin, now what went wrong? I mean, it's they are so good. I mean, it, we were talking about them. They're they're so comfortable. They were comfortable in the playoffs in the in a playoff spot not that long ago. Really, we're like, well, they they've got a cushion. But now ten point cushion. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, there was like, what was it three point cushion at one point? There was, it was a bit ten. larger. <laughs> it was a, t- it was, it was double digits at one point. So, I mean, what went wrong in this last stretch? I mean, you'd hope that they would get better and get and improve upon some of the things that plagued them, but really never happened. I, what went wrong in this last stretch to kind of push them at, to this point? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you can, I mean, you can realistically point to a lot of things. Um, I mean, some folks will literally point to the Jersey ad that was added and how <laughs> literally that be, kind of began the tailspin. It's kind of funny how that literally does correlate. Right. Um, but, uh, I, I, I think it's a combination of old habits popping up again, right? Uh, Alex Lyon kind of faded out. He's, he's looked better in recent games but he he couldn't stop a beach ball in that game against pittsburgh yeah um but like he he had been looking pretty good again um defensive miscues i mean yeah lion didn't wasn't doing himself any favors against pittsburgh but also the defense wasn't helping him either um we kind of talked about this before right it's like all the progress they made last season just went out the window this year it's kind of crazy Mm -hmm. um and uh then you know and then in a game where again this pittsburgh game in a game where um you know it's basically a game seven right 
Um, not only could they not keep the puck out of their own net, but really only two players were scoring and making things happen offensively. Um, one of the things that we touted about this team for, you know, during the good times was just the depth, uh, the offensive depth specifically. Um, they could roll four lines that could create pressure and, you know, not not every line scored on every night, but every line contributed. But when the season or when it mattered the most, when their season was for all intents and purposes on the line, they couldn't get stops and they really only had one line that could, that could create anything. And um, that's not a team with depth. That's not a team that honestly would do anything in the playoffs. Um, like you said, Evan, you can question whether or not it even, you know, makes sense for this team to make, uh, to be in the playoffs if it's worthwhile. Um, I'll just flat out say, I don't think they deserve it. If mm. they can't step up and win against Washington and Pittsburgh, teams that they are literally battling with for the spot. If they can't step up and win these games, they're not going to win a game against Florida. They're not going to win a game against Boston or New York or whoever they could play. It's just, um, they, they folded at the worst possible time. Um, and as much as there are some really good pieces in place already, and a lot of exciting things coming through the pipeline, um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. I, I expect, um, Maybe something of a culture shift, honestly, in the uh, in the off season, because um, for these these old habits to still be wreaking havoc on this team, despite all the additions they've had over the last couple of years, uh, something's got to give. I don't know what it is, but um, something's got to change because what what is there isn't working and it hasn't worked for a while. I like to bounce off that, too. It's like, you know, he's right. Like this team is it's. They don't deserve to be in a playoff spot. <laughs> not not the way this season has unfolded. Like this, these guys just down the stretch, like everyone's collapsed. So, you know, it's not even just, just the Red Wings. It's, you know, this this playoff spot this year that's going to get the second wild card spot will be the lowest uh point total that there's ever been since uh you know they went into this format. Mm. So and the and the uh the Panthers set the bar last year. But whoever makes the uh, the playoffs in that second wild card spot, I think the maximum they can get is ninety one points. Hmm. So, and Florida already yeah. had set the bar, I think, for the lowest at ninety two last year. So, I mean, it, the way they played down the stretch, there's, there's, they have no business being in this position. You know, I mean, how many times have we talked about like, oh, tonight's the biggest game. Tonight's the biggest <laughs> game. Tonight's the biggest game. We've been saying that for three weeks, and now you know, <laughs> yeah. every loss feels brutal. But yet it's like, oh wait, there's still a chance. Yeah. Because the the Flyers lost. The Islanders, I mean, the Flyers lost eight in a row too. They went through yeah. the same thing that we did. So <laughs> it's it, it's hard to it's it's hard for me at times to like be like, oh, you know, we're talking about meaningful hockey at this point. And yes, I do love that we are, but at the same point, do the Red Wings deserve to be in a playoff position and battling down to this uh with these last three games? Maybe not. You know, it's again, this isn't 85 points with three games to play is not a playoff team mm. in the, you know, in most years. So I digress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't seem like any of the teams that are fighting for the second locker spot have been playing very well uh, lately. They're all going to back into the playoffs. I mean, it's like it's the lot this team that does make it maybe the Penguins because they've been playing pretty well. Uh, they're actually 7-0-3 over their last 10. So they're probably the hottest team of this uh, stretch. So maybe they deserve the wild card spot because the rest of them haven't really uh, done much. I mean, Capitals 3-5-2, and two, uh, Flyers are 2-6-2. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Islanders have made a push too and they're in there. They've won six in a row. They've pushed themselves into the division. So they're not, they're probably not going to be in the wild card. Let the Penguins yeah. have it. They're 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 in for a huge rebuild after this uh, after this run here, and uh, yeah, let them get blown out in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> it Crosby one more chance at playoffs, I guess. All right, I, you know, we've talked about it a bit, but Evan, how do they fix it for next season? I mean, like Devin, you mentioned about a culture shift. Maybe I, what do you see happening? Yeah. I'm I mean, sure we'll a, have many yeah. segments. In the off season. That's yeah. a really loaded so, question. And I don't know so how much time we one. have, because that could take all weekend. 
But, um, <laughs> We're going to have a month's worth of these episodes. <laughs> yes, sir. No, seriously. Um, no, nah, I mean, I, I've said it before, and I, I think we can all agree on here. I mean, the defense needs a massive overhaul. It really does. I, I just, I think, you know, and one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is like, it's just, you know, we need to separate Steve Eiserman, uh, the GM who drafts, uh, and compare him to the Steve Eiserman who signs free agents because his yeah. drafts have been great, yeah. but yeah. the free agent signings have not been that great. I mean, we, I, I, I can name a list, you know, cop, Hole, Schrott, Reimer, Mata, you know, even Sprong now has fallen out of favor appears in, in Detroit, which kind of sucks, but you know, he hasn't played that well either down the stretch. Um, I, it's good. Like, I think this is going to be the most uh, pivotal summer for Steve Eiserman with the Red Wings, because, mm. you know, it, the, the frustration of this season, it's, it's, it showed you the potential, but it's gone in so many different directions with the inconsistency. We need a goalie. Mm-hmm. They definitely need a goalie. I, I can't see Kosa playing next year. You know, I, it's, it's, they definitely need to go out and get someone there because I'll tell you this. And I, I have no problem saying this. If there's legit number one goaltender in Detroit right now, we're probably we're probably banking in that wild card spot. Yeah. You know? And as much as I love Alex Lyon, let's not kid ourselves. You know, w- when you're 31 years old and you're still a journeyman in the NHL, you know he's not. It, unless you're Tim Thomas, it, it's it, there. There's a reason why you're 31 and you've never started more than 20 games in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And listen, Alex Lyon caught lightning in a bottle for us, and he he kept us in some big games this season. But, you know, we saw what he's done uh, being the number one starter and like having these all these starts hasn't been great towards the end here. You know, last night was bad. I mean, <laughs> I, I looked up at one point as was like four goals on 12 shots. And, and yeah. granted, those weren't all his fault. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like when you need that big save, you know, we saw what Charlie Lindgren get, did to us against Washington. Yeah, Good Lord, man. I mean, we were throwing everything in the boat at that guy, and uh, a lot of shots that were probably shot right into his chest, though. But um, you know, the Red Wings do have to look at that option too, and like the defense. That's going to be, I think, that's the biggest offseason concern for Eisman right now. Hmm. What is he going to do with that defense? Because you can't bring probably two or three of these guys back. You can't bring Petrie or Hole back, and it, the whole situation. That's going to be the most uh, just. The thing that I can't figure out about Iserman, that 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 signing just this backfired in his face. And so I, I think there's gonna be buyouts this summer, and I've said that before on this on the show. So it it's gonna take some work. And I, I think, you know, I, I think there could be a regression next year as far as you know in the standings, because I think we're gonna have to I think they're gonna bring some of the younger kids up next year. We've talked about this with Johansson, possibly Casper and you know, I wouldn't be shocked to see Danielson fight his way onto this roster if he had to. So it's going to be an interesting season, but he's going to he's going to have to find fill some holes because defensively and goaltending wise, this season was was pretty bad. And I, I can't think of a season in the last 10 years where I mean, even last year, even in the year, like defensively, it's been a mess. And, you know, it's it's something that he is. He's going to have to take very seriously this summer. And I think he knows that. Mm hmm. Devin, do you have anything to add to that? Or uh, uh yeah, no. I, I do think uh I do think the goalie thing is is a big one for me. Um I you know, I we, we Alex Lyon deserves all the credit in the world for what he did for the Red Wings this year. Um, you know, he's this year's version of Huso last year mm-hmm. and Nadelkovic the previous year, right? Um and, and as far as I'm concerned, if they're able to bring in, uh, you know, an improvement uh, in goal, I think uh, Lyon would be perfectly fine as the backup. Uh, you know, I, I feel confident in him starting 25, 30 games a season. But as you get beyond that number, we've seen what happens. Um, I, I've said, I said it before uh, last night, actually, after the game, but um I, uh, to me, if this team's serious about pushing for the playoffs next year, that includes going out and getting a goalie. Um, you can't roll with one, a one B where your one, a one B is Huso and lion next year. Um, uh, Huso has a sub 900 save percentage in his time with Detroit. Not all of that's his fault, but 
that number doesn't give me confidence. I'll, you know, I don't know why it would give anyone else confidence, quite frankly. Um, and Lyon, as we've seen, uh, is not a starter. He's a really good goalie, um, but not every good goalie is a starter. Um, so I think uh, I agree. Defense is probably top of the list, but then number two on that list is goaltending. Um, I think offense will sort itself out because uh, they got kids coming up and they'll probably keep a lot of their guys too, but they got to, they have to go back to focusing on keeping the puck out of their own net. Cause yeah. And it ain't really out of it. <laughs> yeah. Two things. I mean, they, they've proven that they can score. I mean, they, they got them. They got the guys to do that. It's yeah. Keeping the puck out of the net. Uh, defense and goaltending. I mean, how many times have we said that <laughs> this season, right? I uh, it, It's going to be something we're going to talk about all off season too. So yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, this season's not over yet. I mean, they could like say they <laughs> yeah, could still make the it playoffs. Won't end. We're, we're kind of, we're kind of doing a post-mortem here, but it really is. Yeah. But it, it is. I'm like, ready for the post-mortem. It just won't happen. They just keep yeah. dragging it on. <laughs> Next week, we're going to be it's inexplicably talking about how they're making the playoffs. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's do our off the first off the rush here. And, I mean, you mentioned Alex Dabrinka at Evan. Let's go there because talking about some bad that's gone, you know, wrong and like that. But dabrinka has been mostly good this season. I mean, but like you say, the cold streaks, he hasn't scored as much as we were talking about him as like, Oh, he's on such a high hot streak. I believe one of my off the rush is what will he hit this many goals? Cause he's on such a, <laughs> Nope. Didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we said it wasn't sustainable. I mean, it wasn't, and it isn't. So uh, I'll start with you, Devin. Uh, what do you think uh, about Alex to the expectations for him coming into the season? I mean, we were excited that he was coming and, uh, did he meet your expectations? I know. Well, you know, the thing about a bobblehead is that they only shake their head yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I guess this was, this was a bad top choice. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, the Brinkett has like the funniest stat line to me right now because he's he's on the brink of hitting uh, 40 assists. And when I tell you I was expecting him to hit 40 goals and have like, 25 to 30 assists instead he has 25 goal 24 uh, and 40 assists like he's he's doing the exact opposite of what i thought he was going to do um i think that uh in a in a in a vacuum i'd be very pleased with a player that has uh the totals that debrinket has um but as evan said earlier he was brought in to be this goal scorer he was like you know he 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 was supposed to be the one who bare like made Larkin the 50 assist guy, right? He was supposed to score these goals and he hasn't done that. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed in Dabrinkit, but I do think that um, as we head into the off season and into next season, uh, maybe the heat's on a little bit. Uh, is, is he this, uh, is he this 40 goal guy that he used to be with the Blackhawks or is he now a uh, 25, 30 guy, you know, cause that's what he was. Um, last season with the Senators, and that's what it looks like he's going to be this year with the Red Wings. Um, and then one more thing real quick. I know that we're really defeating the purpose of off the rush here, but um, <laughs> uh, I do think when all is said and done, when we look at the numbers, I think he will have been more successful with Larkin and Raymond than with Patrick Kane and whoever, mostly JT Comfer, but that's been kind of a rotating door. Um, so regardless of what happens with Patrick Kane in the off season, I think that uh, the top line next year, at least to start, should be to bring it Larkin and Raymond because as we saw um, against Pittsburgh and throughout the season, that line has chemistry and they work well together. Um, and there's a very real chance heading into next season that those are your top three forwards. So um, keep them keep them together. They do good things together. Yeah. Oh, Larkin and Raymond, dynamic duo. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, I, I don't know. They They seem to make, anyone with them better. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, debrinka has got 24 goals. I had 27 with the senators last season and everyone's thinking, Oh, you know, it seems like he does this. He gets his, he has a down season. He has an up season. Did that in Chicago had the 18 goal season. Everyone's like, what the heck yeah. happened to this guy? That's 32 the next season. Then 41 the next season after that. Yeah. So maybe he'll do it. 
<laughs> maybe he'll do it next season. He'll be his 40 goal self again. I don't know. We'll see. Evan, what do you think about Debrinkat? Uh, has he met your expectations or, I mean, <laughs> well, first off, first off, I think Devin's like a mind reader because everything he just said is what I was going to say. And now my brain, <laughs> my brain is scrambling to come up with something new and I'm too old to pull that off. Um, no, I mean, listen, you got to have a concern about Debrinkit. You know, you, you, this guy was supposed to be our big goal score 20 games. I mean, think about that, dude. One, one goal in 20 games. What does is, what is that round out to for a season? Four? So yeah, exactly. you know, I was told there'd be I was told there'd be no math tonight, but yes, I, I even but you that aced out. it. <laughs> that's, that's the only math I'm good with. But no, I mean, there, there's got to be concerns. I mean, Devin just said even last year, like in Ottawa, like he wasn't what Ottawa thought he would be. I like to bring Cat. I do. I, I think there's you know I I, I don't, but I, I think our expectations of him being like a huge like star. I think he's a secondary star. You know, we're looking at 63 points and 79 games. Is that 7.8 million? Because there's players in the league making 7.8 million that are, you know, putting up a lot more points than that. Uh, it's, you know, I, I'm still on the fence about him. I, I think, he, you know, if we're going to find out because he's going to be with this team for a while. He's not going anywhere. So, but yeah, I mean, the concerns are there. It's It's been streaky all year for him. It has. You know, he got off. To, I thought he got off to a solid start in the first twenty games, but there's times where he's disappeared. I mean, he wasn't even on the power play. Was was it again Washington the other night? He wasn't even on the power play at the end of the game. They had pulled him. So, I mean, listen, I, 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 I like him. I do, but at this point, like, I, I don't know if he's that, you know, that big kind of like goal scorer star that we think we need. I mean, this this team needs more high end talent. And we, we can go and back and, and tame all the lottery luck stuff and whatever, but still it's just, you know, these, these players don't grow on trees and yes, the Rebels haven't had luck with them. Like I said, when you, when you look at those two drafts that uh, where we got Raymond and cider, Raymond picked four cider, picked six, you go back and do those drafts. Those guys are probably one or two. Mm. Now, when you look at the players picked in front of them. So it's, it's not that, you know, it, it's all about luck with the lottery and how the teams move on. Like, you know, look at Colorado, McKinnon, McCarr, how they fell in these players. Like we, we haven't had that luck, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it, it's time to figure it out. Like I think Eiserman's, like I said, a hundred times, he's got a his plate full this season and he's going to have to make some adjustments because this team is not, I, I don't feel it's trending in the right direction. I mean, even Lalon said this week, and I, I forget was, it was what paper it was. He said, but like he, he, he said it, he admitted, it. he's like, I don't know if, if we're going to be here next season. I don't know if we have this chance to be here next season, you know, because uh, you look at Ottawa and Buffalo, they're going to improve. Like they should have improved this year. They didn't. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's going to be an interesting off season. I think it's, like I said, a very pivotal off season for Eisman. What happens with Kane, you know, what happens with all these guys? I can't see a lot of these guys coming back that he signed, especially the short-term deals. Mm -hmm. And I can see him trying to move Sherratt. Petrie and Hole are going to be impossible to move. So it's, I don't know. There, there's there's a lot of stuff going on in my head how uh, this team gets better. But yeah, Debrinkat, I mean, you got you gotta say, like, he is what he is at this point, you know? And mm -hmm. he's not he's he's good, but he hasn't been what I thought the Red Wings had expected as far as mm -hmm. you know going 20 games without goals. So yeah. It's too talented for that, really. I mean yeah. it, it's kind of it's really surprising he's gone to only a, a goal in twenty games. That that's well, he's gone the same way as the team's gone up and down, True. up and down. Yeah. I mean, that's what this season is. Yeah, he's got to get more consistent for sure. And we'll yep. do our own the player report cards or whatever we're doing. Uh, we'll do those throughout the off season too, so we'll be able to expand on a lot of this. All right, let's uh, pay the bills. Talk about our sub stack here at the Hockey Writers. Uh, Great newsletter you get three times a week uh, with all the best articles at thehockeywriters.com. Also have the premium tier that gives you uh, exclusive articles, the new Red Wings unfiltered uh, column that's out there. Uh, it's a prospect reports, lots of fun stuff over at the Substack. So definitely take a look at that in the link below. 
All right. Speaking of stars and two of their stars are are going to need new contracts. And we've talked about this many times already. And the money is going to be insane for the two guys, especially for the second guy we'll talk about. But let's talk about their top defenseman and bar none, the num their number one defenseman, uh, Maurice Sider. And he's up for a new contract. Big money coming his way. I. Uh, Evan, let's project it. What do you see Eisman signing this guy for? I mean, he's definitely worth whatever he's going to get. I think he's going to get over eight. I think he's going to get more than Hannafin got. Um, there, there's not a player in the organization that's probably more important outside of Raymond. And even then, it's whatever. Cider is, you know, we, we all know my love for Cider. I think he's amazing. <laughs> So I, I think he's going to get big term. I think he's going to get, I, I'm hoping for like an eight by eight. I think he, probably something like Owen power got yeah. Owen power already signed his long-term deal. And what was, what was that around? That was around like 7.8. I think he's going to surpass that though. Mm. I think, you know, it, 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 we, we talk so much about, uh, you know, uh, offensively or, you know, he's, the minutes he takes on defensively and what he does out there. I mean, the amount of shots he's blocked and he doesn't, he hasn't missed a game. He took 10 block shots. Was it the, was it the Washington game or the game before that? He, he jumps in front of everything. He, players like that don't grow on trees. And I think he's, I think Mert Sider is a very special player. And I think Steve Eisenman's plan is to keep him in Detroit mm -hmm. for at least the next eight, seven, eight years. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying a little over the Owen power deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably there. I hit this season, another 40 point season uh, as 41 points right now, career high, eight goals, uh, surpassing a seven from his rookie season. I uh, hasn't hit that 50 point mark that he did in his rookie season yet again, but still that's pretty solid numbers for a guy who plays so many minutes and he hasn't missed a game in his NHL career yet, which is well, he dur durability is, is great. He played with the flu the other night against Washington. He was like half yeah. dead and throwing up in the morning. <laughs> still the same. <laughs> yeah. And he's on on track to to do that uh, to finish. I mean, three more games. He plays all three. Or, yeah, starting a little bit of an Iron Man streak there, and and that that's pretty good. He's a special player. He's a very special player, and I, I, he's going to be here for a while. Yeah, Devin, uh, do you agree with that projection? Do you see the big long term deal coming his way around that? eight ish million. Oh yeah. I actually even like the, uh, the Owen power call out. Um, Cause I think that's at least a deal that will be looked at like a, uh, a comparable when they're in negotiations. Right. Um, and I also agree with the idea that he's arguably the most important player on the team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Lark we, we all know what Larkin brings to the team and how different we'll just say the team is without him. <laughs> um, and we know how, um exciting Lucas Raymond is and we'll get to him in a minute but um you know remove cider from the blue line and how bad do things look oh I don't even want to <laughs> um and and I mean it, man. <laughs> yeah right right um he's he's gonna be I, I'm I'm very confident that he's gonna be like the leader on that blue line for a long time um still think there's a strong possibility he wears a letter at some point um, I think this is uh, with the new deal, he's going to be kind of tasked with maybe an elevated responsibility. Uh, you're going to make big bucks. You're going to have to shoulder big responsibility. Right. Um, I do think eight by eight is kind of the ideal. Um, I think maybe 8.25. We're kind of splitting hairs here, but uh, that's kind of where I'd put it. Um, but yeah, I, I think you got to do whatever you can to get this guy signed. Mm -hmm. And I think he will sign. I mean, he's an RFA, not like he has a ton of options, but um yeah i if there's one reason to be excited about this team regardless of how they're finishing the year it's that moritz cider is still a red wing and will still be a red wing and is still just scratching the surface because he still has a lot more a lot more growth that he can he can have in the coming years yeah i mean Coming from a Canucks fan who has Queen Hughes as their as the number one, <laughs> I could have had him. <laughs> I can see. All right, yeah. Um, you know, removing those types of guys from your lineup is just. I, I don't really want to think about how the blue line would look without Quinn Hughes uh, with the Canucks, and same thing with Cider. I really don't want to think about it because 
wouldn't be that good <laughs> at all. Uh, so it, it it definitely he's going to be signed to long term eight years, and I think I I, I want to say probably that eight million probably going to be that too because that own power contract is probably a comparable uh, and that's probably what they'll be looking at so uh, the numbers aren't are i mean he's probably one of the better two-way defensemen in the league and and you go i think they just need to get him a really good partner i i, I mean wallman's been good but i still think there's a better guy out there for him and i don't know who that is but i think there's someone else that could uh elevate him a bit more and maybe make him that he doesn't have to worry so much about defense and maybe boost those offensive numbers. And because I think he's capable of a lot more than 40, 50 points too. So, Hey, it leads the league in block shots too. Yeah. A, he's he's very, big, very, like I say, one of the better two way defensemen in the league at such a young age. So that that's, that's great. He takes a beating and he's tough. Like I say, hasn't missed a game, yep. <laughs> hasn't missed a game in the, in his yep. career and that, and with those blocked shots, there's always that possibility of it getting in the wrong spot. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about – everyone loves Raymond right now. Uh, Lucas Raymond, because he's he's just on fire. I mean, he's got – he had four points, had the hat trick, his first hat trick since his rookie season. Uh, and also, in the last three games, has uh, seven points. So, that's pretty good. Uh, he's been on fire. And he's up for a contract too. And like you said, Evan, I know you should back the Brinks truck up because he's getting the money. Uh, and Devin, I'll start with you on this. What do you see the money going for Lucas Raymond, especially what he's doing? I mean, he's he's really justifying whatever he's going to get paid. Yeah, uh, I've, <laughs> I I want to say it was you, Evan, who said this recently. Um, if it wasn't you, I... I don't know, but uh, I wouldn't Eisenman remember might, anyway. <laughs> I certainly might be kicking himself. They didn't uh, try to get him signed sooner because oh, yep, that was me. Yeah, it <laughs> seems like um, with every passing day, <laughs> that number goes up. Um, and I mean, that's for the best, right? Like this, this is what happens when you have a uh, highly drafted kid start to realize, but realize his potential, right? At some point you got to pay him. Um, but, uh, that just means that next year things are going to be a little bit tighter than maybe you anticipated. Um, but it's all for the best. I think that there's a real, I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I definitely didn't think this was going to be the case before the start of the season. Uh, I think there's a very real chance that Raymond's number is higher than Cider's. Um, yeah. and it's, it's, it has a lot to do with what he's done, um, just within the last couple of months, really. Um, now Cider obviously has a, a trophy to his name, uh, and he's the number one defenseman and we talked about him being the most important player. So, uh, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself with saying Raymond could make more, but, um, gosh, if Raymond isn't pushing for 8 million himself, it's, it's, <laughs> um, uh, and the thing about it too, is that if he continues on his current trajectory, um, 8 million is going to look like a steal very fast. So, um, I, you know, at, at risk of sounding uncreative, I think you could very <laughs> realistically just offer them twin eight by eight deals yeah. <laughs> and hope that they both take them and hope that uh, they continue on their trajectory. Because like I said, I think both deals would look really, really good uh, within a year or two, if not right away. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I know I, you know, I think we talked about this in like December. And I thought <laughs> that Raymond could have signed like a six by six deal. And I would have felt really good about that. Um, I don't think there's a chance in hell that that's happening anymore. <laughs> no. So no. Um, eight by eights are uh, going to be my projection on both, honestly, uh, with maybe a little wiggle room in either direction. It's a good number. He's on the cusp of 30 goals. I He'll probably hit it. Um, last three games, you think he scores one? I think so. I I think we'll hit 30. I think I was an off the rush question not that long ago. I said, really hit 30. I, I I don't know what I said. I think I may have said he's going to hit that more than that, but I would, would, would anyone have guessed that Lucas Raymond would have more goals than Alex to this year? Not me. Don't no, no, no. I don't, I don't think, I don't know what people would say. <laughs> Evan, what do you think? Is it that number eight by eight or 
He's Guys, you, you know, you know my love for background, so I'm just gonna put this out there right now. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to have a little fun here. It's, it's Friday night. I don't get out much. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, it's at the beginning of the season. I, I think, uh, you know, originally everything I've talked about or discussed with other people, I thought he was gonna get like a, a Boldy, a Matt Boldy uh, type contract, a seven by seven. Uh, 49 million but I, I think this season has raised the stakes man <laughs> i think it's 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 hard not to see a blossoming superstar in this player especially when you consider his age and what he did i mean he's had the most points at a 21 year old age since uh slava kozlov mm. in was it 92 or 93 i believe so yeah. i mean he's bringing it night in and night out and, and you, you can see the passion you can see the eth- work ethic and the player he was from last year to this year, you know, hit the gym, put that weight on. That was the, the biggest detriment people were talking about his game, about him getting pushed off pucks and losing those corner battles. You know, we, he, he came out this year as a completely different player and love what I've seen. It, everybody loves Raymond. It's That's the motto. Yeah. Uh, we should be making T-shirts. We're losing money as we speak. But, um, <laughs> he's, uh, he, I mean, he's a special player again, you know. Uh, as much as I love, I love Simon and Raider. I'm I'm very happy having these two as like the two big the faces of the franchise for the, like you know the next ten years. I'm hoping so. Mm. I think he might. I, I think he's going to go over that Boldy contract. I think he's going to mm. get maybe he you know he might surpass Cider. I think Devin's mm. right. Yeah, yeah. I I, I really I want to say there's going to be a nine in that contract. I no, no, <laughs> I, I, I I I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I think it's going to be it's going to be definitely eight, but I could see them arguing that nine million could be something. Uh, and I mean, 30 goal score compared to the 30 goal scores. Right. I mean, that that's what it is. It, he's I'm hoping it's the eight because I think that's that's probably good. I mean, you go match cider and and have him here for the next eight years. That, that'd be great. Uh, and the thing is, is Raymond's just and they say he's just going to get better. And he's just so, so young right now, what he's done in this first three seasons. I don't want to say, you know, sophomore slump last season, maybe. I uh, only had 17 goals, but he's sure, like you said, improved and and knew what he needed to do in the offseason to to do that. And it's definitely paying dividends um, for still, him and for the team, right? He's still a kid. The body's still yeah. growing. He's still, you know, 22 years old. God, thinks he's, he's going to get bigger and he's going to get a lot better, I think. Yeah, I mean, they say what athletic prime's like 25, 26. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what is he going to do at that point? What type of numbers is he going to be put up? So, great to move into my last off the rush, actually. Uh, and that is, uh, Evan, what do you see as career high? What is this career high for goals? I, no, I, I was actually good. thinking about that last night. I, I could see him hit 40 goals. I, could, I think he can be a 40 goal scorer in this league. I, I don't know. I, beyond that, it's it's hard to project, but I I, I see him as a forty goal scorer. I mean, yeah. it, it's the ceiling right now. It, it's so hard to imagine, especially like we we just said as with his age and the way he's played this season. But uh, he looks like he's something special, and he you know he could be that forty to 40, 45, 50 goal scorer. Mm. Devin, you agree? Is that uh, forty goals or you going higher? <laughs> I, yeah, I think he can crack 40, maybe a couple times. Um, I, I think there's like an outside chance that maybe he's a Debrinket type of thing where he oh. can crack 40 in the right situation, but um, maybe that's not what you should expect of him. But yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, with what he's doing right now and just his third season, I think you got to say he's capable of hitting 40, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not ever the optimist. I, I'm going to say he's going to hit 50 one year. I, I, I really do. I, I just, he's just such a great, he's a goal scorer and he, he's got that, that great shot. And the, the chemistry he's got with Larkin, who's here for a long time now after his contract there. I, I feel like they're both are going to be, they're just going to be like that one, two punch where Larkin is going to have like, well, this season he's got quite a few points, but, um, yeah, I think there's just one season that both of them are just going to go off and and hit like crazy numbers, and and Raymond's going to have a 50 goal season. So we'll see. But 
<laughs> it's it's so fun to think about this too because I, I still remember in his draft year he was like his offensive skills were you know pretty well documented but he was always kind of labeled as more of a playmaker um mm-hmm. I, I don't know that anybody necessarily projected him as a future 40 goal scorer in the uh in the NHL so to see him very much on that trajectory to having you say he could score 50 um he's 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 taking strides this year yeah. man it's so excited to think about what he what he could be yeah it's true in his draft year he wasn't billed as like a potent goal scorer he was a great complimentary playmaker and could score but yeah. uh, he's definitely developed a bit more of that being more dangerous in that goal scoring department and I mean, the chemistry with Larkin really helps that too. I mean, that pass that he made to him on, I think it was this, <laughs> is this, is this hat trick goal or was. Yes. Yes. It was. Yes, it yeah. was the five yeah. Hole. yeah. That was a great pass. I mean, it's, <laughs> and of course give Raymond at that point, at that chance, he's going to score. So yeah. that, yeah, it, it, it's, it's exciting to, to see him, uh, what he can do in his, in, his, in the future and next season and, beyond it's just going to be it's going to be fun and speaking of goal scoring by the way you know larkin's missed 14 games and still has three left he's got 33 goals yeah you know he could have he could have maybe hit 40 this year he could have yeah. had a 40 40 year like yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah the 15 wasn't hurt for that that period there definitely uh, and a lot and, of big part of that is playing with raymond and you know and patrick yeah. kane those guys so right yeah, 500 points too. So congratulations to to Larkin hitting that milestone. That's a pretty big number uh, to hit, and yeah, and and setting up Raymond for that hat trick. And I'm surprised that Raymond only has that's only his second hat trick actually, because uh, he had his first hat trick I think in second month of the of his career. I think yeah, something like that. Um, and I mean. It's yeah, I, I I'm I'm excited to watch them again, watch them next season and and what they can do. And then the last three games too, because they were fun to watch against the Penguins. I mean that third period, they were just buzzing like they couldn't be stopped. I mean <laughs> those two guys. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll look forward to to the rest here. But thanks, Devin Evan, for uh, another show with Grindline here and. Uh, Hopefully next week we're talking about because what the season will be over next yep. week. Yeah, season will be over by the time we record next week. So we'll either be talking about them a playoff preview or we'll be doing our post mortem. So it's the either extreme. <laughs> we kind of so, did a post mortem. We did, so. and we're gonna have to <laughs> yeah. gonna do a huge, huge thing again. But draft profiles, uh, draft profiles. Yeah, ready for yes, it. They're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> either next week or when they eliminate from the playoffs, which could be really soon. I, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, but make sure to check out all of our articles at hockeywriters.com, all the stuff we got going on at the sub stack. Uh, check, take a look at that in the link below. We got the premium part of it as well, but until next time, we'll see you in another episode of the grind.